guys, today we're going to be demonstrating, I guess, one of my favorite sites, Codecademy, which is a free-to-learn kind of online coding site. We're going to be learning Ruby. I have zero experience with Ruby. We're going to do the first section. The entire thing takes about nine hours, I guess. It's beginner level, so if you know nothing about coding, you should be able to pick it up pretty quick. And uh, this kind of gives you an overview of what you'll be learning. Um, Obviously, if you have some programming experience, it's going to be a little bit easier. Um, but I encourage everyone who's looking to kind of add a skill to their resume to check out Code Academy because it's completely free. Just like two clicks, you're in. Log in with your Facebook, um, Python, Ruby, PHP, jQuery, JavaScript, HTML, and then they have a bunch of other cool like little side things um, that you can do to kind of test your skills and create something new. Um, I personally love it. It's just another way to stay on top of programming and maybe get familiar. There's so many um, skills you need nowadays that it's, it's nice to have something easy like this that's helpful. Um, like I said, uh, so I guess this first six, this first section is uh, 16. Yeah. Uh, times in the you basically put your info here in the uh, your built-in like environment. Um, I'm going to kind of skip over. Ready to learn Ruby? Click to submit to continue. So, I'll, you know, first thing first. Nil, I guess, is nothing there. Let's see. And the next thing is, uh, like, all, all this is going to be pretty basic. We're talking about data types right now. So, um, okay. So, in this case, we're initializing integer. They want us to set it to 25 in the instructions. Boolean, uh, true or false value, they want us to set it to true. And then string, they want us to call Ruby. So, we got to make sure you use your parentheses. And then I have hints here also if you get stuck. Like this one, it's pretty pretty basic one. You can set a variable to a value just by typing the value after the equal sign. You know, stuff that maybe if you've never coded before wouldn't be so intuitive. Set the variable myNum to value 100. So again, pretty easy. We're gonna just follow the instructions. Declare our variable. It would seem that the standard for Ruby is to use a underscore. Um, I'm not. I'm just assuming that. I don't know for sure. So far, this is pretty similar to most object-oriented. We have our modulo. All right. So this I need to take note of. Double, double uh, times for. Um, powers it would seem. Okay. Alright, we're not going to do a little math practice. We're ready to go. Alright, uh, so 2, double, double, to 4, so that'd be 2 times 2, which is 4, and then times 2 times 2, so it should be 16. Cool. Alright, let's see here. Uh, puts and prints. For the put string are slightly different, adds a new blank line after the Thing that you want. Okay, so this is like print ln. Put is like print ln in, uh, in Java. And print is just it prints it out without taking a new line. Alright, so print. Like uh, print ln in Java by the sounds of it. So let's do uh, put actually. And we'll do hello and then we'll print world oops and then we'll print one more time so it's really apparent same line space just to keep it nice and so what this should print is hello on one line drop down a line world same line oh, I guess I don't see this is where my uh, my Java and Python and you'll catch yourself doing this where you just uh, oh it's kind of the same thing and then you're putting things in that aren't supposed to be in there
should work. Oh, it's puts. Okay. There we go. So it's puts. I'm not sure why it's printing now, but uh, might just be built into the ID. So you see, hello drops down a line, then uh, same line period. Now, so next we're going to be doing some string methods, just things we can use. We're going to just skip over this. Uh, not really one big for instructions. All right, so we're going to call the um, the length method. And it's nice because it looks like we're not going to have to use parentheses or, or uh, brackets too often. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We're counting space 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So this should give us a return of 15. And we got 15. All right, we can also call the reverse method. So we'll do the same thing with my name, and it should print it backwards, and we'll do it right here, just for fun. So that's L-E-A-R-S-I, let's actually make that dot C and A L. Y T. All right, and so this should uh, basically swap the lines here. Oh, let's try that one more time, actually. See, it. Uh, I guess it only uh, would do it for one of them in this ID, but if we were to do it the other way, it should. Do it all right. So, all right, next thing. All right, uh, upcase will make everything caps, and downcase will lower everything. All right, so it wants us to put our name. So we'll do it like that. Dot upcase, and then do the same thing again. Puts. I often skip a line in between stuff. It's just something I've always done. So my code may look a little more larger than what's normal. Dot down case. So let's see here. So we have all uppercase, all lowercase. Cool. So next, writing good code. I just got done doing Python, so everything has to be indented perfectly. And here we're using uh, comments, Java standard to slash slash, and it would seem in Ruby that pound is the way to go. So here we go, common example. It looks like a single line. Okay, so in their case, their multi-line, equal begin, equal end, is how they do comment one, comment two, comment three. So in this case, this is how they do their multi-line comments. It's a little bit interesting. I like that. Okay, so standard is keep every uh, keep your string uh, lowercase to start. So we have name right here, and we're gonna put my name in again, and that should work. All right, so we initialize the string set to Dylan Christopher Israel. So next is gonna be a quick review. Create a variable called my name again. 
standard is to use lowercase or underscore rather. I'm just going to go with Dylan, shorten this up. We're going to do my age. Oops. And forget the quotes here. Because um, it's not a string. So, here we go. So, that worked. Declare a variable name and set it equal to a string containing your name. So, we'll do Dylan and call the down case so now we're going to say name dot down case call dot reverse on lowercase name reverse. and call up case right, so name dot down case so let's say name equals name dot down case actually let's see if this works so name dot down case dot reverse so let's save okay so that works um, and then we want to call the uppercase dot upcase let's see if that works okay cool and so what basically happens we're just chaining the methods together um, so we call our name string, we downcase it, it reverses it, and then it finally upcases it. So even though it doesn't look downcase, this has happened, then this happens, then this happens. Another way to show this would be name.reverse, name.upcase, just show. Just do one at a time. That's kind of how you have to think of it. We would have got a different result there, though. Create a single line comment on multi line comment. So remember again, this is a single line comment, pound or hashtag. It's them young as we say a single line comment. And then equals begin, equals end comments here. And that is our introduction. Oh. We should have run into an error. I'm pretty sure I'm doing this right. Let's see here. Single line with the hashtag multi line starts with no space between the equal. Okay. Let's reset the code real quick. We'll Equal begin, equal end. This is my comment. Hashtag comment sample two. What is this madness going on here? Okay, uh, I guess I'll use this to show you. So sometimes we'll get stuck on stuff. So there's a Q&A form and a glossary here. Glossary will probably be a little more introduction. So let's see, 16 of 16. That's what we're on right here. Um, easy way to find it. Okay. Um, so it just seems like a little bit of a probably an error on their end where for this to accept how it works you need to have a space there um, but normally I, I don't think we have to so that was our introduction to Ruby um, the next session putting the form in formatter <laughs> uh, you can see it's already a little more complex